Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today, as promised, we're going to be calculating algebraically and geometrically the consumer surplus on a supply and demand graph. With that said, let's get right into it. All right, guys, so in this example, we actually have a very generic supply and demand curve, just the demand curve and the supply curve drawn out on a price and quantity axis. This is what I recommend you do at the beginning of every single problem, even before you have any of the values figured out, just draw the rough sketch of the supply and the demand curve. Now you'll notice at the top that we actually have a demand and a supply equation, and the demand equation is quantity demanded is equal to 90 minus 2p, and the supply equation is quantity supplied is equal to P. So the first thing that I want to do is find my equilibrium. Now, if you don't remember how to do this, we do have a video specifically dedicated to how to use these equations to calculate the equilibrium quantity and price. However, in this video, we'll assume you know how to do that already and we'll just get right into solving for it. So we know that when we're trying to calculate the equilibrium, we're looking down here for this point right here, which is Q star. And then we also want to solve for this point over here, which is P star. Now we know that at the point of equilibrium, the two Q's are equal. That is quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. So that's how we're going to start. QS is equal to QD, right? Both Q's are gonna be equal to Q star. So we have effectively an equation that is P is equal to 90 minus 2P. I'm going to put all the P's on one side and all the constants on the other. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to move the 2P over to the left side. It's going to be P plus 2P is equal to 90. Well, if 1P plus 2P is simply 3P. And what is this equal to? Well, it's equal to 90. How do I isolate for P? Well, I'm going to divide both sides of the equal sign by 3. Now I have that optimal price is equal to 90 divided by three, which is 30. So now I have my P star. My P star is equal to 30. So I'm gonna erase P star. I'm gonna sub in the actual real value that is 30. Now I need to calculate Q star. So I can choose the quantity demanded or the quantity supply equation, and I'll simply sub in 30 for P. Now, obviously I'm going to choose the supply equation because this equation is really easy to see what P is. Well, I simply have Q is equal to P. Now I know that P is 30, so Q is equal to, let me sub in 30 for P. Well, what do you know? Q star is equal to 30 as well. So let me erase this Q star and sub in 30. Now I have my point of equilibrium. The equilibrium price is 30 and the equilibrium quantity in this case is also 30. Now there's two more points of intersection that I need to calculate this consumer surplus. And that is the two intersection points where the demand curve intersects the price axis and where the supply curve intersects the price axis. So let me solve for those next. Okay, so remember that these are just linear equations. That is, they're equations of straight lines. So if I want to find the intersection point of an axis, in this case, the price axis is my Y axis, I will simply set the quantity equal to zero because anywhere along the price axis, the quantity is equal to zero. So for this first one, it's really simple. For my supply curve, if my quantity is zero, then I'll simply have an equation zero is equal to P. So then right away, I know that this point of intersection down here is simply equal to zero. Now it's a little bit tougher for the demand curve, but it's not that hard. So we're gonna take a look at that next. Again, all we're going to do is set QD equal to zero. So we're going to have an equation that looks like zero is equal to 90 minus 2P. Now I'm trying to solve for P, so I'm going to put P over to the left side of the equal sign, which is going to change the sign to a positive. Now I have 2P is equal to 90. I want to isolate for P, so I will divide both sides by 2. And now I have P is equal to 90 divided by 2, which is 45. And so now I have my last value that I need to calculate consumer surplus, and that is up here, 45. So now I'm trying to calculate the area of this triangle right here. And so to do that, I'm just going to take the area of a triangle and apply that to my graph. Well, I'm sure that we all remember that the area of a triangle is simply equal to half base times height. Well, that's going to equal one half times the base. Now, what is the base right here? Well, it's going to be 30. And I know this because if I, because that's the increase from zero to 30. So the base in this case is going to be equal to 30. And now I need the height, which is right here. 
and I know that this is 15. Well, how do I know that this is 15? Well, I take 45. I look at the difference between 45 and 30. I went, I'm starting at 30 down at the bottom of my triangle here. I go up to 45. That's an increase of 15. So my height of my triangle is 15. Now I have no more variables and I can simply solve for the area of this triangle. One half times 30 is 15. So my next line would be 15 times 15, which is effectively 15 squared, which is 225. So the area of this triangle is 225. And therefore we would say that our consumer surplus is equal to 225 as well. Now what's the unit for consumer surplus? Well, it's actually dollars. And that's because we're talking about how much the consumer saves based on their willingness to pay in terms of dollars. So the consumer surplus in this case is the area of this yellow triangle and it's 225. So to recap how we calculated this, the first thing we did was find the equilibrium price and quantity and label it. And in that case, this was 30 and 30. So then I labeled those and I went and found the intersection points of the supply curve and the demand curve on the price axis or the Y axis. And that gave me zero and 45. Using that, I simply found the dimensions of this yellow triangle in the middle and calculated that it was indeed $225. We're going to do a video similar to this on producer surplus, which is a little bit different, but it will follow along similar lines as this. Again, if you don't remember how to calculate equilibrium price and quantity, then feel free to check our video out that covers that concept and then come back to this one and, and see if it makes a little bit more sense. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment what sort of economic concepts or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.